morning or good afternoon, good evening. I hope you're all well. Thank you so much for joining me today. Um, we are Totally Beads and I'm Natalie and I'm going to be showing you today how to make this lovely necklace. Now we've got some gorgeous shell pearls in this kit and I've created a little bit of kind of like an ombre effect. Um, we've got lots of different colours within this kit. So you can change up the design. But what I wanted to do is um, give the look of essentially pale knotting, but without the faff of pale knotting, because it can be time consuming. It can be um, a little bit tricky. I will like to do a pale knotting um, demonstration for you soon and I will um, show you a few different ways that you can do a pearl knotting but this gives a very similar effect we've just got lovely spaces in between as well so as you can see here if I move back it's quite um, a long sitting necklace it's probably about um, 24 inches about 60 centimeters when it's on in this design but you can of course change that up you could and take out some of the the beautiful pearls that we've got in the kit you might want to keep some back and make some earrings with them which i think would be lovely they're really nice lovely large size they feel a very nice weight not too much um but i hope you enjoy making along with me today what i am delighted about is that we appear to be on facebook as well as youtube and i can see the comments it feels like ages since everything's been working okay uh, tech wise so hopefully today will be a good day and it's a good start to the weekend a uh, good morning to jan she says good morning from an overcast sudbury and she's wishing you all a lovely morning as well good morning to rachel um who's in a windy Walney Island off Barrow. Um, Camille is delighted that I'm back on Facebook. I am too. She says it's dull and grey where she is. Elaine is wishing everybody a good morning. Hello to Trish and Judith and Lisa and Angela as well too. It is, um, the sun is trying to come out. It's been a very overcast, wet again day, windy, just fed up of the weather to be honest but the sun is is starting to peak out a little bit but it is still quite windy and um, i'm off out tonight and i'm on the train so i'm hoping um i'm hoping the weather stays okay and i stay dry at least um good morning to Anne. she says good morning and everybody welcome back to facebook i don't know how long it's gonna last um i have had messages this morning on um, the platform that we stream off that there is um changes occurring so hopefully we'll be able to work around that because obviously everybody likes to access us in slightly different ways and facebook i think is um quite prominent for a lot of you and me too this is how i i found totally beads is through facebook so i'm hoping um i'm hoping we can sort that out in advance good morning to tina she says hello to everybody um so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to take you over to the website i'm going to show you um a few different products that might help you um, with this. And um, again, it's just one kit because there's numerous colours within this today, but you can change it up and you can change design however you see fit. Good morning to Angel. She says, good morning to all you lovelies. Good morning, Nat. Hope everyone's well. And Facebook user says, hi all as well. Um, I've got fingers crossed for Camille as well. She's, she's hoping we stay. All according to plan. So I'm going to take you over to um, the website now. Facebook user says, good morning, Natalie. Yeah, I found you on a cold uh, but sunny in Torbay and I hope everybody is well. I'm good. I hope you all are too. So we are on um, Facebook. We are on YouTube and we are totallybeads.co.uk. So you can head over to our website. We ship worldwide, as you know, and you can get your hands on our lovely, lovely kits. So if you would like you can have a little look at the bead boards that we have um on offer for you as well they are five pounds and 99 pence and this is a really lovely large board um it says it's 28 inch for helping create necklaces it comes complete with a lid for easy storage ideal for making necklaces and storing your beads and it gives you that size as well it's 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 like an a4 size um 
so it is a really handy um, tool to have it's a bit of a fuzzy photograph there um, and you can see other things that customers have bought which is quite handy too and um, a bead stopper is always a really handy uh, little nifty tool to have that's only 99 pence you can get other size um, bead boards this one is only £3.99 and I think that one's really good for making bracelets with particularly <clears throat> but when I'm doing um you know when often when i'm planning out a design it's really handy to have one of these boards because not only does it come with a lid so you can store it away while you're kind of between projects and it's got lots of lovely little handy compartments in so you can put your seed beads in there you can put your um, bead in threads whatever it is all your findings can go nicely in there as well but it gives you a good idea of what your final piece will look like when it's laid out I find them really helpful if I'm doing ombre techniques, um, ombre as in like changing through tone and colour and looking at different patterns. So if I'm doing certain projects, I don't feel like I need one. But when I'm a first kind of starting out and designing a project, I do often um, I do often like to to use that. So if you want that, that's available for you as well. But I'll show you the kits that we're using today if I can come back out of there. So head into the video tutorial category section, you'll be able to see all our different makes that we've been working with um, over the last few weeks. You know we've got lots of different techniques, so whether you want to make pendants or bracelets or earrings or necklaces, there's lots of design inspiration there for you um, and lots of different techniques as well, whether you want to do chainmail, stitch beading, uh, wire weaving, whatever it is, there's I think something for everybody. Today we're doing the Petra shell pearl ombre necklace um, as I say you've got lots of different beautiful tones in there so there is just one kit today it's six pounds and 99 pence and if I click in you can have a little look at exactly what we're doing so this is the finished piece this is the way I've designed it and I'm working through numerous different kind of tones and shades of those beautiful um, shell pearls we have got some glass pearls in there for you as well they are 12 millimeter in size so they're nice and large um, gives a really lovely kind of statement piece effect and they look gorgeous together um, we're using the acrylic spacers, which is going to kind of, as I say, create that kind of knotting um, look to it. But it's really easy. It is just bead stringing, essentially. Um, but they are acrylic spacers, so they're going to be in a gorgeous gold colour, which will match your findings. Um, but also ensure that your necklace isn't too heavy with them being acrylic. They've got a lovely colour to them as well. You're going to get a lot of tiger tail in your kit. I'm going to use about 80 centimetres of the tiger tail today because I would like to bring it back through and um, just to make it a nice sturdy piece. You've also got your wire guardians, which are kind of like little horseshoe shapes, which give a beautiful professional finish to your, um, your necklace and your jewellery. We've got a gorgeous heart shaped toggle clasp for you and we have also got some crimp beads and crimp covers as well and the crimp covers will just create an effect that makes it look essentially like another one of those lovely little acrylic spaces so how you can gain those lovely kind of professional finishes to your piece and this is another photograph of it as well so you can see it at the side and you can see those kind of tones running through the pearls there if you want to have another look exactly what pearls we're using and what components we're using then scroll down the bottom so we've got lots of different colored pearls there for you we've got um the shell pearls in a light pink color very very soft colour. We've got them in a golden yellow, they're all 12 millimetres and we've got them in a dark olive as well. The glass pearls in your kit, which look very, very similar, are the peach um, and I think they just added that extra little bit of warmth and kind of added to the tones between those kind of golden yellow coloured ones and those light pink that we've got. We've got the acrylic round spaces for you which are four millimeters in size and in terms of your um see it's just scrolling along because there's that much in there in regards to your toggle you've got this beautiful it's 20 by 12 millimeters it's gold it's got a beautiful heart on it a lovely swirl as well i will show you them down on the mat and then all your findings as i say which is going to be your tiger tail um 
your crimp beads, your crimp covers and your wire guardians. So lots of lovely things for you in the kits today. I really do. I love working with pearls. Um, I love shell pearls. I think they're a more affordable, um, beautiful um, component to work with and you get a beautiful luster on those and they're just they're very very nice so i hope you like them too don't forget check out the website if you would like to get this exact kit and kind of play along with me in this design however if you've got stuff at home you've got lots of beads you could do um you know would suggest get maybe a beadboard sit and just play about with the color um and you can create something very similar as well so i'm gonna head back into the comments um because now i've got you with me i want to be able to say hello to you all um good morning to joanne she says very gray but the sun's trying to break through and um, she might not get to see it all today because she's got a baby basket to deliver to her youngest daughter and pick up a scan picture how lovely um and we'll let you off joanne it's more than enough of a good excuse uh, good morning to carol Camille says, I've had that board for years, but I've never had a lid though. Um, I want the lid too. The lid's really, really handy. If you're like me, Camille, you'll often have numerous different projects on the go. It's a good way of storing it. To be honest, I don't know. I was going to say I don't know where my lid is, but it's there. I can see it just over there. Um, it, it's not often with the lid because I'm, I'm using it quite a lot, but um, the lid's quite handy too at the moment. The, the lid's <clears throat> using as a little tray for, for my wire and things that I've been working with lately. Um, good morning to Hannah, a long time no see Hannah, I hope you're well. <clears throat> Joanne says, my mum loves her birthday present, one of your gorgeous pearl necklace makes. Thank you so much, Joanne. I'm glad she likes it. Hello to Pexy Beck. I think I've pronounced that right. She's saying good morning to everybody and Catherine's in as well. So let me take you down on the mat. Oh, oh, hey. Why have I got blank screen? And it starts. Ah, oh, good lord. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. That was a hideous noise. I knew it was going to be something. Right, I'm going to not go through that web browser. I did ensure all my sound settings were okay today. And they started off being all right, and then they played up a little bit. Let me go through a different browser, and let's hope that we can amend that. I'm so, so sorry. I'm so, so sorry. <laughs> oh, gosh, that was a hideous noise. And everybody who was watching me left. <laughs> Let me try again. Let's go a different um, browser. Um, <laughs> Angela says that was a wake-up call. Yeah, good morning or good night to everybody. Uh, oh, Pexy Beck, thank you so much. I hope I'm pronouncing your, your name right. She says she loves my work. Thank you so much. Uh, Birgit's in as well. Guten Morgen to you, Birgit. Birgit, I hope you're well. Um, right, let's let's try this. Oh, oh. <laughs> right. I've actually moved my um, camera up a little bit today so you get a little bit of uh, a better view. I know Trish, you got a love technology, she says. Uh, Birgit says, it is windy and rainy and dark in Germany. Uh, so is Nablik cold or is that windy? Vindig is windy. I'm not great. Oh my gosh, Rachel, I'm so sorry. She said she was wearing her earphone, her headphones. <laughs> Sorry, I'm so sorry. Right, okay. Oh, there's always something, right? This is your gorgeous beadboard. Look at it. Um, is everything going okay? Sounds okay. Everything's working all right as it should be. So you can see it's got the I can't even fit it in shot because it's 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 such a good um size. If I put it that way, does that help? I could have done with hiring my camera up even more, couldn't I? So you've got all these little compartments on it so you can fit in your seed beads and your threads and whatever else. Um, and it's got these lovely measurements on it. And I find it's just a really good way. Shall we put the light on? Will that help? It's not going to plan. <laughs> If I move it up slightly, you can see I can create um, my ombre effect moving through those pearls 
or whatever beads I'm using um, and I can play about with that so I could start popping my spaces in between as well and not only will it help me make sure that I'm laying things out symmetrically and it looks appealing um, but I can also play around with numbers in regards to that size so I could think actually um, I want to add more in I want to add less in I want to change that round I want to alternate them a little bit more the way I've put this piece together is I have gone from lightest coming down into the dark in those gorgeous shell pearls these are a beautiful color so these are, there you go, there's a little bit of focus for you. These are your darker um, of the pearls. These are your dark olive. Absolutely beautiful. Um, but they are kind of like a gorgeous bronzy tone. Really, really gorgeous. Um, you've got these gorgeous golden ones as well. Um, and then that's moving into the peach and that lovely, very light pink. They are pink, but they're kind of like the softest tone of pink. So I really like to play in around with um, using different colours. If I can show you what the necklace looks like here, you can see, don't want that to fall off. I've just added the spaces in um, to kind of create that kind of knotted look. And of course, I've gone with gold with this because I think it really ties in with those lovely tones um, of those pearls. In terms of your clasp, what I'm using today is this lovely little heart toggle. Really, really sweet. There you go. A little bit of focus. Um, Angela says it's Friday. Of course, it's going to go wrong. Um, and Joanne says, thank goodness that cold I had left my hearing aid off reading the comments and seeing your reaction. Oh, Joanne, I'm so sorry. Um, I will also put captions on this if I can um, on my YouTube, which is Natalie Patton Jewelry. So if you um, haven't got he hearing aid in, which I think it's probably a good thing you didn't just then, <laughs> I'll pop the subtitles on if I can, or captions at the end. Um, so they're the components that we're working with today. A really straightforward and lovely make. Um, as I say, I will do some knotting with you in um, future. I did originally start out thinking I was going to do some knotting with this, but um, for me personally, the, the, I've got a few different techniques to do pearl knotting, but I like to... Um, I like to make sure that the uh, silk I'm using and the um, pearls that I'm using have the kind of right compatibility in terms of that drill hole. And we don't uh, often when you're using like freshwater pearls, it's got very tiny, tiny drill holes in. Um, and if you're bringing the thread back through or that silk back through, um, then some of them do need kind of like you need like a bead reamer to make those pearl holes a little bit larger. These are a really, really good size. They've got quite large drill holes in these, um, if I can hold that up. So again, you would need a thicker um, silk, maybe a number six, I would suggest. Otherwise, you're going to have to knot quite a few times. Um, so if I can, this one is has actually been done on the silk. Um, but I haven't done the knotting with it. I'm going to use the tiger tail today because I feel it's going to give it that extra strength and stability, but it's also still going to create that lovely kind of movement and fluidity in your pearls while you're wearing them. Good morning to Yolanda from uh, Michigan. Good morning to Celia in Bolton. And good morning to Kelly. Um, she says, good morning, Natalie, and everyone in the chat. A beautiful necklace, by the way. Thank you so much. You can, if you want, make a pair of earrings with these two. I think just one on their own would be absolutely beautiful. Um, one of the things I did want to mention is when I am using my design board to design my pearl necklace, I'm using odd numbers. And I think that adds, um, it's more aesthetically appealing for me. They use it a lot in like interior design and things like that as well, because it gives your eye like a center kind of focal point. So I've got that flickering now because I'm moving my cables. Each of my pearls, whether they be the glass pearls or the shell pearls, I am using five to run um, along into the next colour. And then we get five into the next colour, five into the next colour. And then at the bottom, if I can just position that, 
a bit better. Here I've got seven um, and I've done that. So I have got that odd number. I've got that center focal bead in the middle. There is a slight delay on my camera at the moment. Um, Hello to Tova, I hope you are well. So let's get making, let's get going. Really, really easy and really straightforward. I will knock them off at some point, won't I, I'm sure. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a long length of my tiger tail. I've got about 80 centimeters here. Of course, I'm not gonna have an 80 centimeter necklace. I just wanna ensure that my um, meeting thread is long enough to run back through. So how I'm going to start is I'm going to get my crimp bead out. I'm just using the one crimp bead. Now I know I always double crimp but I'm going to do one uh, today because I'm going to use that little crimp cover and that's just going to kind of um, hide it and give it a really pretty finish. So I am going to have to move that tray on and let me pop it to the side. What if I pop it on my keyboard? Is that a disaster waiting to happen? Sorry, I need a bigger desk. I need to flip my desk to a, a different um, a different way. There we go. Okay. So I'm just going to add on my crimp bead for now. And then I'm also going to add on my wire guardian. Now my wire guardian is, it looks like a little horseshoe shape. And it's got little holes that kind of run up on each side of it. So I'm going to take my tiger tail and I'm going to bring it through one side. And then I'm going to bring it back through. So it's going around the top. I'm just going to pull myself a length of that tiger tail um, just so I've got enough to run back through. And I'm going to bring it back down the other side which means it's going to just sit around there really really nicely and I probably don't need to run that much back through so I'll just reposition it that will do and slide that back up so you can see now that tiger tail is sitting nicely in the wire guardian now before i bring that back through my crimp bead i'm going to attach my clasp now you could add a jump ring onto this and then you can make that clasp detachable but if you um are wanting to just add it straight on so you don't need the jump ring it will fit nicely inside and what that's going to do is it's going to protect my thread whether it be um a silk thread or my tiger tail whatever it is um, it's just going to stop it rubbing against that um, little toggle clasp. Um, if you are using um, silk, you can definitely use these wire guardians. They are really, really good thing to have in your stash. Um, or you could use a bit of French wire as well, which acts in the same way. I'm then going to take the tiger tail, little um, tail end, and I'm going to run that back through the crimp beads. And I'm going to push my crimp bead up so it is sitting fairly straight and underneath the wire guardian. And then I'm going to come in with my pliers and I'm just going to press it down just as usual. Now you can leave it like that and it looks nice, but I think to give it a little bit more of a professional finish, I'm just going to add on my crimp cover. Now, I know Laura was using these um, the other day. Um, and I think a few of you kind of struggle putting them on. Um, sometimes it works for me. Sometimes it doesn't. I don't really know the rhyme or the reason to it. But if you see, it looks like a little kind of Pac-Man shape. Let me get a better one out, which is not which is a little bit more open. It's already slightly closed for me, so I want to show you how it will look. So it looks like this. I'm maybe a little bit too far away from the camera. On it. We've got a little bit of focus at all. So it's kind of like a half, um, a half bead. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to slide that over that crimp. So the crimp is sitting inside with the tiger tail. I'm just going to position it on 
and hold it in place with my finger. My finger's going to be covering it slightly at the moment, so I do apologise. I hold it, hopefully you can see. All I'm going to do now is I'm going to make sure that it's pushed up over that crimp and I'm going to start to close it over. So I do mine in slight little turns. Now you can get kind of um, crimping tools which can help you with this. But if you haven't got them to hand, you can still do it with a pair of pliers, which I'm going to show you now. If it behaves. It's because I'm trying to keep it under the camera and also my finger's not too much in the way so you can see what I'm doing. Um, but I think I'm just going to have to go for it. <laughs> because it doesn't... It, I've also got the lamp in my face because I've repositioned my camera. So I'm going to just slide it on and in. Let me move this slightly. I will have to check that my camera doesn't go off halfway through. It's feeling like it's very, very warm at the moment. Okay, so I've slid that on. I promise it isn't as fiddly as I'm making it look. And I'm just going to start to close it over. So I've kind of trapped it inside. If I can hold that up, hopefully you can see. It does come in, it finishes it more professionally. But it's not fully closed over, so I'm just going to press at the side and close that side in. And then move on to the other side. So all I'm doing is creating, essentially, it looks like another little bead, which is now completely covered that crimp. And then I'm going to add on some of my spacer beads. And I'm going to show you now by using these little spacers how they're going to create um, a very similar look to those. So you can add two or three of these spacers. Um, it, it really doesn't matter. Um, but I like to start off with the spacers because if I've got a toggle clasp, what I want to do is I want to make sure that there is enough um, movement to get that clasp on. So if I show you this, which is a dinky little version, if I had my pearl straight on next to it, I might find when I'm starting to move the... Um, the toggle inside of the clasp and do bear in mind this is a tiny version I need that movement Sorry, pop -ups. I need that movement there to be able to lay the um, t-bar on the toggle basically flat so it will fit through and I can get it on and off with ease so I like to add a couple of spaces you're going to get enough in your kit to add three spaces on as well as in between all of those lovely pearls so I'm going to add um, two or three on so I'm just adding it on to both ends of the tiger tail and you can see there now by adding that little crimp cover it just blends in really, really lovely. <laughs> Camille says it's the size of a Barbie's belt. Yeah, it's not going to be a bracelet for anybody, this. Um, maybe a ring, but I don't think it'd be too comfortable with the top on to wear on your finger. Um, I just wanted to show you how the reason why I'm getting those in. So I'm going to add a couple of my spaces on. I say it is really easy stringing. Um, I've got this longer length now as well, so this is just going to act as kind of like a double as it's running through, and I'll bring it back again through the end slightly. Um, I should have enough. I've used quite a very long tail there. So then I'm just going to start working off my design board to add on my gorgeous, large, beautiful uh, shell pearls. So I'm adding one on, and it's just going to go all the way through and then I'm going to add a spacer so as I say I'm going to add um, odd numbers onto this you can if you want um, beat them all on and then bring that tiger tail back through but I find it easier really just to, to slide them on at the same time so now I've got them just sitting there on my board it means not only do I not have to sit and count um, which can be very helpful if you're doing a pattern uh, maybe on your necklace where you know, you're counting out particular colours or whatever. Um, 
I don't have to think about it. I'm literally just picking up off the board and sliding them on. And I'm just alternating between each bead with these lovely little spacers, which give it um, that knotted effect. And I think it just it gives it quite um, an expensive look. Kelly says crimp covers never go on that well for me. It didn't for me that time, did it? I was a bit fingers and thumbs. Um, you don't have to use them. I just think, you know, if you're going through the effort of making sure you've got some beautiful products um, like the shell pearls, you often just want to give it, as Camille says, that little professional finish. Um, but you wouldn't really see the crimp bead anyway if you did want to um, to leave that out. And you've got that wire guardian as well, which is going to give um, that extra durability. As I say, that the whole point of that wire guardian or um, wire protector is to protect the wire so it stops it rubbing against your clasp because obviously as you're wearing this you're going to be getting that on and off numerous times and it's just going to ensure that it's not rubbing against your your silk or your tiger tail or whatever bead and thread that you're wearing um so a really straightforward make anybody can make this necklace if you are new to jewelry making um, it's it's a nice um, project to start with. If you're not new to jewellery making and you just want some fancy lovely pearls, then um, you know this is a really lovely kit. Totally beads do um, a real range and variety of um, products. So obviously we have our glass pearls, which I adore um, because they are um, you know they look just as I think any other pearl would, but you've also got that more kind of un uniformity in size. These shell pearls here, of course, are um, perfectly round and beautiful to work with. Um, but if you do want fresh water pearls or rock pearls or anything else, we do have um, lots of different ones available on the website. Um, we also have lots of lovely gemstones and um, lots of different shapes and lots of lovely things. So. Um, I usually use the glass pearls because we've just got such an array of um, colour and sizes in the glass pearls. I think they um, are really affordable, lovely thing to use. Um, with these shell pearls, they've just got um, a pearl essence that you, you, you just, it's just such a lovely luster on them. They are very, very gorgeous. And they are reasonably priced as well. So your projects today for this lovely project kit is a whole six pounds and ninety nine pence. Um, and it is a timeless piece. I think um, lots of people are are wearing pearls, lots of different um, ages, lots of. I'm hoping I've, I've not brought too much of that tiger tail back through, and I've got enough to string on the rest of my necklace here yeah, I probably should um but yeah you've got um lots of people that are, are wearing pearls um in terms of age but also um genders as well there's lots of celebrities and um, that you'll see you know Harry Styles is one for wearing them um a lot you've got um a lot of pop people in the public eye and lots of different types of jewellery kind of go in and out of fashion but I, I, I don't think pearls ever do they're, they're, they're timeless so you know, if you look back in history they've always got like royals and whatnot wearing them um these I just think they they're just so lovely kind of they remind me of of the beach with these gorgeous tones they're beautiful and warm so you can see there i've got to the end of the tiger tail and that's absolutely fine because i'm still adding in um my space beads and my pearls and then when i'm wearing that that's gonna stay covered so i don't really need to trim that little end off it's just gonna stay hidden inside there and now i'm just going to keep going so i've moved from my um, very lovely light pink from my peach 
into this gorgeous golden tone. Um, so really straightforward, easy bead stringing, just taking my thread and my tiger tail through the hole, <coughs> excuse me, the drill hole in the pearl. And through the seed bead. And I'm putting an odd number on. So I'm putting five of each on until we work into this lovely um, kind of dark olive colour. Again, you could just add five on, still an odd number, but I quite liked um, having that little bit extra in the centre. And you can see you've got that fluidity and movement using the tiger tail. Um, and I think that's what um, people are after when they're wearing a, a pearl necklace. When you are um, knotting, it can be um, a nice therapeutic thing to do, um, but also it can be a very expensive thing to do when you're pearl knotting. If you were to take your, um, like a strand of pearls to a jeweler's and you wanted them to be knotted, some jewellers can charge up to five pound a knot, which when you've got as many beads as, um, as many pearls as I've got here, that can be expensive. Um, so if it is a technique that you can do yourself, then that's absolutely great. But using these spaces, um, just give that same gorgeous effect. Um, and it's a it's a much quicker way of doing it. Camille says, yeah, she's noticed a lot of boys wearing pearls. Um, they're just they're very on trend at the moment, that's for sure. Sue says this looks lovely in Turkey on holiday at the moment. Sorry everyone, but it's lovely and sunny. I have to catch up when I'm back. So we'll let you off. Just do us a favour, bring the sunshine back with you, please, to the UK when you get home. Because the weather's just... Just doesn't feel spring-like at all here at the moment. Um, and I think when the weather's good, it just makes you feel a little bit better, doesn't it? So this, this project for me is... It's lovely. It's... Um, it's, it's bringing, as I say, the beach vibes. I've got shell pearls. I've got gorgeous toes, tones. That, to me, looks like a sunset. Um, I do think I probably... I didn't measure my tiger tail, I'll be honest. I said, I've got about 80 centimetres here. But actually, I don't know whether I did. <laughs> Whereas when I put your kits together... I've made sure you've got plenty. So you don't need to bring it as far back through um, the pearls, but you do need to make sure you've got enough to string them on. And I'm starting to worry I don't because my pearls are a gorgeous size. They are uh, 12 millimeter size pearls, um, your shell pearls and your glass pearls. So um, it comes together really, really quickly. And there goes the camera. My phone is roasting. It's absolutely roasting. Right, let's um, let's try again because if we get another what twenty minutes out of it, then that should be good. The other one for some reason just puts my sound back on, and then you get that awful feedback. Um, and I don't I don't know why it happens. Make sure everything's muted. But this tends to kick me off occasionally. Um, oh, can we also take grand some words, pearls? Well, that's uh, lovely. Uh, Yolanda's saying she wishes everyone weekend. has a lovely she's weekend. Uh, she's going to start working. It's almost 20 more weeks in the morning. So she's going to watch me on Monday. Um, let me bring myself back up. Okay, so I'm just carrying on. I've now finished with those lovely and um, golden toned shell pearls and I'm moving back into these peach colour. They do have 
a really lovely, lovely weight to them. Have I got echo? Can you hear me? Okay. Yeah. Um, it's always something, isn't it? <laughs> Thank you once again for being extremely patient with me today. Um, uh, I don't know. I'm hoping we just it it will just sort itself out. So once I've gone back through my peach tones. I'm going to go back through my lightest colour and of course because they're on the beading mat I didn't put the um, spacer beads onto my, my beading tray when I was designing it uh, because I knew I was just literally going to be alternating um, but if you're making a mauler or something with, with lots and lots of beads um, which I will be doing I'm hoping for you in the next couple of weeks um, it is a really good idea to have one to hand because you can um, really play around with your design and ensure everything's in place. And then when you're happy with it, it's literally just a case of just working off your board um, and you're less likely to make mistakes because it's all there and you've checked it and whatnot. Um, so the mauler I'm going to be making in a couple of weeks is um, a mauler has a 108 beads in it um, and that's not including a guru bead so it's really handy tool to have to count okay so I started with three of my uh, spaces so I'm going to add three of my spaces on again so I'm just sliding them on and then I'm going to add my crimp bead. So I'm going to get one of those out. Just make sure if you're not using the jump ring um, that you, you know, you do add your, your lovely clasp back on before you bring um, it back through the crimp bead. And then I'm going to go up the wire guardian, up through one side. And I'm going to bring it back again through the other side. But I'm not going through the crimp bead yet. I am sliding the other side of my toggle clasp. So in this case, my bar through. And then I'm going to bring that tail back into position through the crimp bead. And I'm going to take it back through um, some of my other beads as well. So if you've got a long length, you can run it back through your pearls. Um, if you want, you can just run it back through your spaces. I'm just going to use my pliers just to grip it. Because what I want is I want to ensure that this is all um, close together. And I've not got any big gaps in it. So I'm going to move it down. So my spacer is right next to that last pearl. I'm going to position my necklace in, in the curve that I want it to be kind of worn in. So it's got that nice shape to it. And I'm just going to make sure that the toggle clasp is staying inside my wire guardian. And I'm just going to gently pull down. Now, if I find like I've got a little bit of a gap um, and I do need to remove it, I'm just going to give it a pull. And then if I pull gently... I mean, the tiger tail is nice and strong, so you can be quite firm with it. But you can see that as I've pulled it, it's gone into position nicely. I've got no major gaps, and my wire guardian is sitting nice and straight. Just give it a little reposition with your finger and your thumb, if it's not quite lined up as you'd like it. And then when you're happy with it, you can just come in. And I'm just going to squish down that crimp bead again. I'm making sure I'm just hitting the crimp bead, um, which will give it its kind of it all in place. But I'm making sure that I'm not getting um, that spacer bead at the top. Because if I push a lot of pressure onto the spacer, I can crack that. Um, so I've just put a little bit of pressure onto the um, that crimp bead and I flatten that down and then I'm going to get another one of my crimp covers out and I'm going to lay that in position 
in between the wire guardian and that spacer. So I do need to just line it up to make sure it's just covering the crimp. And then when I'm happy with it, I'm going to gradually close that over. So I'm getting it into position first. I tend to come through the, um, obviously the side where it's closed at the back, it's got that little opening. So if I just check, I'll do that again so you can see. It is a bit fiddly because obviously you've got your toggle on. So all I'm going to do is just line it up. I'm sorry my fingers are in the way. If I move my fingers, I drop it. <laughs> I'm just going to line it up. It's going to fit really nicely. There's enough space. There you go, if you can see. Just to get over that crimp bead. Ah, and I've just got my, my acrylic spacer. That's a shame. Okay. I've already flattened my crimp down now, so there's not really a lot I can do about that. Uh, oh, bother. <laughs> it's not going well today for me, is it? Let's, um, can, I, can I save it now I've got that crimp on? I wonder, I wonder ever so slightly if I could just cut through the crimp bead but not the tiny detail. Um, everything can be salvaged. This is what I was saying, just make sure that you are carefully just putting it on to the, um, putting the pressure down on the crib because if you put it on the spacer beads it can and as it did there break so i'm going to salvage this i've just cut through the crimp bead so i've lay it up kind of horizontally so i'm not getting the tiger tail and then going to just bend that back off and as I hadn't cut my tiger tail, I can still use that also. Let's get rid of that crimp bead. <laughs> Phoenix says hello, late again. Um, you, you've just, just joined me while I've, I made a boo-boo. But look, it's fixed. So, and that's the wonderful thing about having the wire guardian though, because if I was using French wire, I'd have to cut a whole new piece on with a new crimp um, spacer bead. Right. Let's do this properly and get it right. Uh, see, Camille said, add a crimp cover on and pretend. I could have done. I could have done. Yeah, that would have been a solution because they do look very similar. They're slightly smaller. So I could have just closed over another crimp cover and pretended it was there. It would have still stayed fixed because the crimp bead was still on. But I'm not. I'm going to salvage it and do it properly. Um, so let's just, just pretend that didn't happen. <laughs> this is where it happens again now, doesn't it? I'm like, oh, no. Um, so I'm going to go through the Guardian going back through the other loop in the Guardian but I'm not closing it off yet because I'm going to add on my toggle cross and then going to pull it fairly taut and bring it back through the crimp bead And I'm bringing it back through a couple of the spaces as well. I'm going to bring it back through all of the spaces. You can, if you've got a long length, bring it back through the pearls. Um, and that will just give it a little bit of strength. I'm not going to go through the pearls though, because I've not got that much. She says desperately wanting to go through that pair. <laughs> um, it has gone through that pair. 
As long as it'll come out the other side of the paper, it doesn't matter. Just feeding that through so I can catch it at the other end. Which one is it? Sorry, I know I'm probably not in shot. Is my camera even on? <laughs> it just goes back to my face and you just see me with my tongue now concentrating. I'll just pull it through that one for now. We can bring it back further if need be. Okay, so everything's in position. It's all fairly tight. I'm going to make sure that there is enough space for me to get the crimp bead, but not get the spacer. I also don't want to be getting the um, wire guardian because I've, I've actually, you can flatten the loop on that as well, which doesn't really matter, but it will, will look a bit more nicer if it's not fully flat. I'm going to get the crimp cover. It's this lamp in my face. I really do need to rejudge my desk. I thought it'd be nice to have it higher up today so you can see the beading tray, but actually having the light right in my face isn't isn't helping. And then you're going to add the cover over the crimp and I am gently pressing on the crimp cover. And now I've locked it in place, I'm just going to gently get the ends of it. So if you can see there, slightly open, I'm just going to tuck it in. So it kind of acts as like a little shell. I'll show you it close if I can on the camera without it being in. And there you go, I've finally done it. You can take that thread back through if it's long enough or you can come in and trim off where you like and now you have a lovely necklace which because of those crimp covers and those lovely spacer beads you can get that toggle in really really easy um trish says the post lady just delivered a totally bead or a perfect timing for a weekend play uh thanks phoenix <laughs> for being so encouraging um and camille's giving me a round of applause thanks so much there is your gorgeous necklace. I do want to show you one of these little pretty covers um, and see if I can explain a little better. So you can see here, put it there, it's like a little Pac-Man, little open sea. And as I close it, It's going to close into a circle. I have got my tweezers actually. I wonder if I could use that. I'll use my pliers. But if I hold it up to the camera, you'll see, even though I will have now contained um, the crimp in it, still slightly open at the sides. Come on, give me focus. So all I'm doing with my pliers is I'm just going around gently just to squish this bit in and to squish this bit in and then it forms and closes and creates a lovely circle or well, that that's the plan anyway <laughs> and then it will look like a little perfectly closed little space bead. So this is my gorgeous Petra Ombre necklace today. I'm going to bring it up and I'm going to put it on just to show you that it's sturdy and it works and it's not going to fall apart around my neck. Um, there you go. And um, I think it's a really lovely, lovely, lovely design having those uh, different colours and that kind of ombre tone. The kits today are just £6.99. So if you want to head over to the website, you can get your goodies there. Jan says she's ordered the bead board and a lamp and another one of these kits. If I can just show you, this is what I'm dealing with. Excuse the boxes in the back. This lamp has been in my face while I'm making it. It's, it's, 
it's not great i do need to uh i need to fix my setup don't i <laughs> if you could see what i'm working in um thank you jan she says it's beautiful thank you so much everybody i'm gonna be back with you on monday um what am i making earrings i think i'm making with you on monday um, i'm also going to be at the beads uh, fair on sunday with, with um beads up north i think it's called it's at haydock uh, race course and i'm still i'm still uh saying there's tickets left so if anybody is up that way or you are popping in and you are coming to visit then do pop over i don't know what number store we are but you won't be able to miss us um, it's going to be me and Simon. I'm not sure if anybody else is, is coming from, from the Totally Beads team. But if you'd like to come and say hello, I would love to see you. Um, I'll help you put some projects together in person. We'll have a little bit of a natter. Um, and I'm going to be putting some stuff together myself while I'm there. So if you want to see how the magic happens, you're welcome to come and watch and help. <laughs> I hope you have a really lovely weekend, everybody. And I will see you very soon. Take